Hello and welcome to another lovely installment of Grammar. This time as our third installment where we get to do exciting things like having things and describing actions in French. All right, here we go. So we're going to start with our adverbs of intensity. Of course, adverbs are making our language both more exciting and more precise. Um, by rule, adverbs always follow the verb in French. In English, you'll notice um, if you're getting really excited about English grammar that your adverb can exist in like five different places in a sentence and still be grammatically correct. Um, and we use them in different places for different kinds of emphasis. No, not in French. They follow the verb. The end. Nope, just the verb. Right after it. And so every time it'll make it much easier for you to know exactly where it goes. It goes right after the verb. And so, trop, beaucoup, assez, and un peu, I'll answer the question of how much. That would be an intensity adverb. How much did you eat? Je mange trop, or je mange un peu. Right? Did you eat too much? Did you eat a little? And then you have your adverbs of for frequency. So, Things like trop, assez, un peu, they tell you how much. Frequency tells you how often. Again, by rule, adverbs follow the verb in French. Uh, toujours, souvent, parfois, rarement, jamais are all things that answer that question of how often. Toujours means always. Souvent means often. Parfois means sometimes. Rarement means rarely, and jamais means never. It's like a Likert scale of how often you do something, right? That is from most to least there. Um, but it's helpful to think about things in that way so that you're able to uh, decide what you want to say later on. How often do you work? Je travaille parfois. Or do you travaille toujours? Right? I know a lot of you are working all of the time, so you would say je travaille toujours. If you're only working a little bit, then you've got je travaille parfois, sometimes. And then, of course, we have to add a regularity. So we've been working through adjectives that are generally regular, teaching about like whether someone is content or amusant or something like that. But there are, of course, many irregular adjectives, just like there are many irregular verbs in French. They will be your most frequent adjectives, as you might anticipate. And we know how adjectives usually work, right? They go before and only special circumstances. Usually they're after. And of course, you have to make all of those lovely, lovely agreements. Important, importante, importante. Shock. All right. There are many that are following other pa other patterns when it comes to making those kinds of agreements, and that's where the irregularity comes from, right? And so they either accent, they end in se, f becomes a ve because that's what making it feminine feels like to the French, or we double the l's so the pr the pronunciation stays lovely. The reason for all of these changes is basically because it has to sound pretty at the end. The French love when their language sounds lovely. And so that like cacophony or any other sounds that just don't quite make sense, yeah, the French are going to avoid that at all costs. And sometimes that makes the spelling super weird. So here we go. Fier becomes fier. Very simple. You just add that accent. If you don't add the accent, the E fades away into the sounds because of the way the letters are jammed together. So you have to make sure you have the accent so that we know what to say, right? Fier. And you have heureux, which means happy, of course, which becomes heureuse for women, for females, heureuse. So the first one is pronounced heureux, heureux, and the second one is heureuse, heureuse. It's like a long Z. Fier just becomes fier. And then you have sportif, you get to say that F, sportif becomes sportive, and that's just pronouncing the D, sportive. And then gentil, 
becomes gentil with that double L. And you get to make that nice Y sound in certain regions of France. Some will do it, some won't. Where I lived, of course, I made that Y sound, so I'm used to saying gentil, but others are not. You might not hear in other parts of France. All right, now we're moving on to n'est-ce pas, which is a quick way to check for agreement. It's added to any phrase. You're making it a question of agreement. Like, you know, you would in English by saying right at the end of a sentence. You'd say n'est-ce pas in French. Or isn't it, which is what it literally means. So an English example would be you like music, right? Or this book is interesting, isn't it? In French, you just add n'est-ce pas. T'aimes la musique, n'est-ce pas? Ce livre est intéressant, n'est-ce pas? Voilà, and that's all it is. It's really good for conversational French whenever you are delving into your more complicated sentences and things like that. It's a way to ask if someone else likes music without having to ask it with an inversion or with esca. You can just say n'est-ce pas at the end of your sentence, um, and you won't have to worry about all those complicated ways to make questions, which we'll delve into more completely in the next couple of weeks. Yay, we finally get to have things. Avoir means to have, and it will add so much to your ability to speak in French because avoir helps us to say things that we would say with etre in um, English. I mean, um, being able to say to have in French is really important because they have things that we would describe as being in English. Hopefully all that together made sense. Sorry, guys. Um, so we're going to start with je form, obviously, but because there is that vowel in a, it becomes je, je. And you have tu a, il a, elle a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. So that last one, what's particularly interesting is that s making its connection to the O makes a good Z sound. If you don't want to make that con connection, you can just say il ont. That is perfectly correct as well. For me, it makes more sense to make that Z sound, so that's how I make it, and it's something you'll hear a lot in France. It's something called a liaison, whenever the um, last consonant of a word connects to the vowel that's in the next verb. It's something I also do with nous, right? Nous avons, vous avez. It's something that you'll hear a lot because in French, as you notice the words leaning on one another, they're just, they all need support. So they're leaning on the next one. And that's why it all sounds like one long word every time someone says a sentence in French. And it's actually by design. And so um, whenever you're linking up words like that, it's important to pay attention to how you're linking them up. Because as you already know, être, the um, il form is sont with an S sound, sont. So you need to make sure you're making distinctions between they have and they are. And as long as those sound different to you, that's what's important. And hopefully they sound different in a way that makes sense to others. That would be doubly good, right? Making sure we're understood at the end of the day is everything. And so let's do a listen and repeat and you guys will get my pronunciation um, and you can tweak it to within the rules to um, build your own way of communicating so that I can understand you. All right, here we go. J'ai. Tu as. Il a. Elle a. Nous avons. Vous avez. Ils ont. Elles ont. Alrighty, feel free to come back and listen to me as many times as you'd like, if you like my pronunciation, um, if you would like to um, have someone else's pronunciation. I'm sure there are lots and lots of other videos which go through this conjugation. Um, there are songs, all kinds of craziness. I think there's a rap. So feel free to seek out other sources if you want to hear how others pronounce it. Um, whenever I say nous avons, that is me simply um, bringing out my teacher French. Uh, obviously, people say nous avons, right? They say it as one word, um, but it makes it easier to remember if you can think of it in that sing-songy way. And so if you have other sing-songy ways that you develop um, out of this, 
to help yourself. Those are all perfectly valid and enjoy whatever works for you guys. That is everything I have for today. I hope that you are having a great week and I'll see you in class. A plus.